which, you know, is depressing to me. I mean, yes, like, yeah. you know, movies are stupid, but sometimes there's nothing better than seeing a stupid movie in the movie theater. And I'm sorry. Oh, that's great. W- w- even, even a great movie, watching it on a TV, even if it's in, like, a high-quality Blu-ray fucking, you know, uh, format, is, is different than seeing it in the theater. And it's like, not I, the same. It's not the same. And, like, look, and, I'm and not going to be rushing not... out to see fucking Tenet in a movie theater under these conditions. I'm not going to fucking be breathing the same air with some shithead so I can watch The Batman starring Robert Pattinson. But it is, it, it is depressing. However, allow me to sketch out a scenario that is not the pessimist. Oh, hell yeah. One. Give me something that good. Is, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to... Let's get some hope. Let's get some hope back in our culture. Let's just get, get that simmering idea that there's a better future out there. So, yeah. Things look very dire all around. We like, and you know, for, for me personally, the idea of like movie theaters going away or never again really having that movie theater experience again is depressing to me. However, hear me out. What if there was a number of movies out there currently in production that will arrive at exactly the same time that, ho- like, you know, hopefully when we're all coming out of our coma, what's going to be there? What's going to be there to bring back movie magic? I'm talking, of course, about Avatar 2, 3, and 4. That's right. Yeah, yes. James Cameron yes. James Cameron will save American culture. James Cameron, the, it's just the whole time, while all this shit has been going on, while we've all been suffering and pulling our hair out and dealing with this election, this fucking pandemic, all the bullshit we talk about on the show, quietly, behind the scenes, there is a man who has been working to save America and that man is James Cameron and Sam Worthington and Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> and apparently Kate Jim, Winslet as a blue person. And, and yeah, Kate, yeah, Winslet. Kate, Winslet, Kate Winslet, one of my first crushes as a as a boy, is coming back into my life as a blue person. <laughs> James Cameron, James Cameron, I, I think there's an interesting article as, uh, to be written or maybe even a book about the liberal sexualization and deification of anyone who appears as though they're a competent bureaucrat or administrator. Oh, God, but, yeah, the Fauci thing. For every one hundred, for what every one hundred Fauci's, just some or Robert Mueller's, just some shitty fossil, some representative of a deep state that has fouled you a billion times and uh, is now just great in comparison to Donald Trump or Rudy Giuliani. There is one James Cameron, and I mean only one. The James Cameron is one of the greatest Americans, I, I, and he's Canadian, let's, let's, which is the best type. That's just another province of America. Yeah, no, that's, that's the best type. Yeah, you know, yeah. Once Alberta, once they us, succeed, he could be God Emperor of the, the new Albertan uh, Republic. Yeah, James Cameron, the he made the greatest action movie of all time in T two. That's the best one, maybe the greatest movie of all time. He made the most anti imperialist big budget movie ever, and it made uh, True like, Lies. What <laughs> True Lies? Yeah, well, True Lies <laughs> very pro imperialist. <laughs> it. I have a different reading on it than you do. We can talk about it in another episode. I'm, of course, talking about Avatar, the single most anti-imperialist, third worldist. It film. is honestly. It's it, it yeah. is like it is a post-colonial text. I'm sorry. It's just it. yeah. Not only, and you know how I remember when we talked to Naomi Klein. I asked her, "Is there a way to get normal Americans to care about imperialism?" And she said, "Sadly, no." And I respect Dr. Klein, but. There is one man who made everyone care about imperialism. Yeah, and it's James. Yeah, I mean, he, he made re- everyone. He recreated nine eleven, where we were doing it <laughs> to <laughs> an indigenous population. He's so yeah. Think about how many jobs he's going to create painting people blue. He's doing it right now. They have a closed yeah. like they have a closed bubble the way the NBA did. They've got a bubble city in New Zealand where he's cranking these fuckers yeah. out. They, they've he, gone through it, like a hundred thousand COVID tests or something insane like that. You know, you know who was also from he was a place that wasn't really part of the nation, but he came from the outside. He impressed everyone with his competence, his will, his celestial vision. Alexander Hamilton. And then no, oh. I am talking about Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay. And his heir in spirit. Maybe his reincarnation, James Cameron. I mean, the the kind the, the giant budgeted projects that he has single handedly commanded it is nothing is very similar in culture and in art nothing is more similar to that than Napoleon at Austerlitz or something yeah like that you is know, a similar uh, that's those things are more similar than Cameron is to like a writer or an, a, a painter or something there is a phrase that the writer Patrick Seal 
used in his book about the Assad family that I've always remembered, Celestial Vision, yeah. and it is means the grand, the the almost third person in your own life where you could see into the intentions and secret desires of others. And James Cameron is the only person that has that in the world Absolutely. now. Uh, Cameron, do you know where he got the idea for the Terminator? Where? Well, Harlan this Ellison amazing. will say it was him. Yeah. He sued no, him he's a fucking liar, pig, revisionist, crap. Um, Cameron had food poisoning and had a dream that a robot was trying to kill him. <laughs> and from there, he created the greatest action film franchise mankind will ever know. Well, the first he's, two, they really went downhill after that. Well, because he's Terminator 3. Involved. Terminator 3 is very underrated. You're right. Okay. You're absolutely very, right. Rise of the Machines yeah, is very Terminator underrated. It's the comedy. Terminator 3 It's the comedy. Rocks. It's the action yeah. comedy version of the Terminator. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's a little proto-soy, honestly. No, 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 it's anti-soy. It's onion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a movie made entirely out of onions. Uh, no, he's... I think, like, unless we get a Gaddafi soon, we have to make Cameron the emperor. Yeah, the the North no. American emperor, no question. He has the best administrative capabilities of anyone in this country. No, it's true. I think I said this on the show before, but uh, uh, I think his ex-wife, Linda Hamilton, was yelling at him because he wasn't like going to a, a family event. You know, he wasn't going to see the kids recital or something. And he said to her, there are only three other people on earth who could do what I do. Yeah. Think about all these democratic assholes who are like, uh, Hey, everyone stay safe. Put your mask on you fucking pigs. And they're going to hang out with their shitty families. And Cameron is like, no, yeah, I have to make true lies. Yeah. You yeah, no, no, is, no, no. Think, think, think about that. Think about. Sounds like it's insanely, uh, insanely uh, uh, selfish and narcissistic. It's actually he is underselling himself because the people he's thinking about, who's comparing himself to Spielberg or, or somebody, those guys don't write their own material. They don't no. create their own concepts. He is a stem to stern auteur at a scale that is almost unprecedented. Okay. Think, think about it on one side, like we said, all, all of the all of these awful pigs who are fucking eating at like Michelin star restaurants and, uh, you know, sucking and fucking with their friends and, you know, drinking fancy wines and doing all the shit you're not supposed to do because they they just need to do it. They just hey, I got I got to do me. Cameron, when he has to do him, does he go? Does he violate quarantine? No. In fact, he does the opposite. He gets in a hermetically sealed bubble and goes to the bottom of the Marianas Trench by himself. OK, you could not be more socially distanced than that man looking it's at true. Like, and I just realized that albino there is actually now flu fluke worm at the, coming out of a sulfur <laughs> vent on the fucking crust of the planet. Discovering like um, uh, he, he's going to one of these days, he's going to find that missing uh, Air Navy flight that started the Bermuda Triangle at the bottom yeah. of the ocean. There is I, I realize, though, there is one guy who actually is as a stem to stern auteur at the scale of Cameron, and that is, of course, Christopher Nolan. And I'm sorry, that is a virgin chat dichotomy, if ever there was one. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you know why? I mean, Matt, like, you know why? Like, the reason Warner Brothers doing that is because, like, everyone in Hollywood saw the returns on Tenet. And, like, that was going to be the movie that was going to be the That asshole cost them, the theaters, Warner Brothers, yeah. like, probably uh, $300 million. Imagine what that movie would have brought in if they had done, like, a $20 it, thing if at If he the had just gotten his head, out, his, his, his foppish hair out of his own asshole to just be like, look, I know I want, I want everyone to see my movie on IMAX 3D, but just let them release it direct to fucking streaming so that people can just see it. Like, it, it would, yeah. it, like and people would have paid $30 to watch that movie. At home, James. Absolutely, my God. There's, there's I would so have. starving for any like new content, something to talk about, something to meme about. Dude, people like Tiger King for a couple weeks. Oh my God, that thing was dog shit, <laughs> and everyone was fucking fixated on it because it was a thing that was on. And like the Last Dance, nobody gives a shit about. I'm sorry, not that many people <laughs> give a shit about basketball. The way the people I saw talking about, it, it's like you don't care about this. It was a thing that was on, and Tenet would have been huge. And he's like, oh no, it simply wouldn't be proper. It's like, bitch, it's a movie about like time traveling secret agents. Get your head out of your ass. This motherfucker, did you see that he recently quote was uh, talking about like his role as creating the superhero genre, which of course now even the people who created it are embarrassed about because it's consumed all culture and destroyed it. Uh, and he said, well, when I made those, the Dark Knight movies, uh, it wasn't so commercial. <laughs> it was a fucking Batman movie. Shut the fuck up. You're being an imp trying to turn your dog shit into art because you can't stand on its merits as like just an entertainment the way God King James Cameron can. He's, he's, he's insecure only so far as like, uh, you know, people aren't acknowledging uh, the, the, the 
the the like cultural impact of the thing. He's not going to try to tell you how to enjoy it. He's not going to tell you where, how to in- extend your pinky. Well, I think we should leave it there for today's show. And I will just say that you know there there is a light in the darkness. You know, it's waiting somewhere out there in all that darkness. There is a light out there. Keep that hope simmering inside you. And tonight, when you put your head on your pillow to go to sleep, let your celestial vision reach out, and you will wake up as a stately, elegant, seven-foot-tall, blue cat person on the <laughs> gorgeous planet of Navi. And, and we, can all, we can all live like that. We can live in a it's perfect Pandora. existence. Pandora. Okay, you can, okay. The, it's the planet is Pandora. The people are the Navi. You will be yes. on the planet Pandora as a beautiful Navi, you will be using your 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 genital uh, uh, port. Tails. You're using your genital tail to have sex. You'll be using it to to fly a pterodactyl. Yep, but, fucking but, a pterodactyl while flying. Yes, but you yes. but but you will be beautiful. You will be whole, and you will feel hope again. It's out yep. there. It's out there. You'll be Some, happy somewhere in all that darkness. Shit may be coming in. You're weak, but not giving in. The cries and the wails of the valley below. Movies will be back. And they will be better than ever. I want to. I want to close on this. The seminal line from Avatar. I see you. 